Hi! Welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking about the evaluation of definite integral and the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so let's start now. We'll start first with this definition. So let f be a function from this closed interval a, b to r be a bounded function. We say that f is Riemann integrable or the so-called definite integral on the closed interval a, b. So don't tayo magbibay sa domain niya. If there is a number i such that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that whenever d is a partition of the closed interval a b with the norm d which is less than the delta we have this one here and where your psi sub i this is in the closed interval x sub i minus one to x sub i that is for every interval. Tapos, eto is nandun siya sa partition ng closed interval AB. So, if that happens, so, we call such i to be the integral of f of x from a to b. So, ano pala yung ibig sabihin nito? So, this is, ano to? The Riemann sum. The Riemann sum of those um, partition ng closed interval AB. So, bali, if you have a close interval a b pa ganun basta ganun and you divide you partition that into some points let's say x sub 1 x sub 2 and so on so those interval let's say x sub 1 to x sub 2 kukunin mo yung mga sums nila and that will be the representation of this riemann sum here yan and that riemann sum um this is i I to n kasi finite lang yung pagkaka partition nila. So later on, we will be able to know what does this integral of f of x from a to b mean. Second definition that we have to tackle is um, this one. It says here that if f is integrable on the closed interval a b, then we define this. So, ibig sabihin, yung integral ni f of x dx from a to b is actually the same of the integral of f of x dx negative yan, that's b to a. So, yung pabalik tad niya. So, we will discuss some properties before we tackle some examples for that. So, first property says here that if f daw is integrable, so, bali yung f mo, is integrable on the closed intervals, let's say AC and CB. Yan. Tapos, yung C mo is between A and B. Then, F is integrable. So, yung implication niya, F is integrable on a closed interval AB. And, we have this one here. So, the integral of f of x dx from a to b, pwede natin yung isulat as the integral of f of x dx from a to c plus the integral of f of x dx from c to b. What do you think would be the purpose of this property? Well, the purpose of this property kasi, let's say for example, you are interested to get a certain area of the region bounded by curves. However, yung curve kasi is, let's say, irregular shape siya. So, kailangan mo siyang hatiin in such a way na baka kung hatiin mo siya, you would see now the structure at which, let's say, ah, yung unang hati siguro can be uh, a curve I mean a region bounded by a certain curve na pwede nating ma-picture out agad at yung pangalawa naman is pwedeng simple structure lang. So this is the purpose why we can divide this uh, partition para magkakaroon tayo ng um, division of integrals din. And this is actually this will actually work in a way that pwede natin siyang padamihin. Let's say, for example, your f is 
kunyari, ganito siya, inti, uh, integrable over some many partitions, ganun. So, pwede dahing magkakaroon tayo ng man- maraming partition na ganun. And that will work. Pangalawang properties. Yung F mo is integrable pa rin. is integrable on the closed interval AB. And um, let's say you have a constant K. So, yung integral mo daw ni F of X, DX, so may K dyan, pwede mo palang ilabas yung constant niya before you work the, on the integral of a function. And that will work. And uh, pangatlong integral property is Provided that your two functions, f and g, are integrable over the interval a, b, and um, yung sum nila is integrable, so the integral of f plus g, so maging ganito, um, f of x plus g of x uh, dx, So, provided ha, yung F mo is integrable over the closed interval AB. Ito din naman is integrable and then the sum is also integrable. So, pwede mo silang paghiwalayin. Yan. But be careful of the conditions. Okay, so we will have the fundamental theorem of calculus here. At important ito para ma-identify natin yung certain value. Let's say the purpose of this is actually to to get the specific uh, value or the estimated value of the area of the region bounded by curve or could be the volume of a sol- solid revolution and so on. So first is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Sabi dito is your f is continuous function on the closed interval a b and um, yung capital f mo naman is the function defined by this so ibig sabihin yung capital f mo is the antiderivative of f so that works for every x in the closed interval a b then ito siya the second fundamental theorem of calculus naman says here that your f is continuous on the closed interval a b and your capital f is in the antiderivative of f then so ibig sabihin if you take the integral of f of x dx from a to b ini-evaluate mo lang sila in this manner okay so Now that we have discussed the first and second fundamental theorem of calculus, we will now apply this in an example or in a lot of examples. So example number one. So we are interested to get the integral of 2 minus 3x squared plus x to the 5 in the interval negative 1 to 2. So mangyayari, we, if we take the integral of this, ito, So, this will be equal to 2x minus, mayayari is x cubed, tama, plus x to the 6 over 6. Okay. So, we will evaluate this entirely from negative 1 to 2. So, mag-evaluate tayo. So, ito na yung panibago nating uh, function. So, this will be the f, the antiderivative of this. So, the next step, we will evaluate that with respect to 2. So, magiging 2 times 2. Yan. Minus 2 cubed plus 2 raised to 6 over 6. And we will subtract that evaluated at negative 1. So, we have 2 times negative 1 minus negative 1 raised to cube plus negative 1 to the 6 over 6. So, kayo na may evaluate that's equivalent to 10 over 2. Okay, so let's try another example. Ito, um, the integral of sine of cosine 2x times sine 2x dx um, from the interval 0 to pi over 4. So, how do we solve that? So, in order for us to solve this properly, um, ang mangyayari kasi this is a chain rule integral. So, we let u, so let u be equal to cosine 2x, tama? 
And then, if we take the du, ang mangyayari dito magiging negative 2 sine 2x dx. So, kung napapansin nyo, nakikita nyo na ang du mo. Kulang lang ng negative 2. So, what happened now is, ganito na lang, du over negative 2. So, magkakaroon tayo ng sine 2x dx. Since pinalitan mo yung cosine 2x ni u, ibig sabihin, papalitan mo rin yung interval na yun. So, what happened now is, um, di ba 0 to pi over 4? So, when x is 0, anong mangyayari ng panibago mong u? So, u becomes... Uh, di ba ito cosine uh, 2, 0 papalit mo yung 0 sa x na yan so we have cosine of 2, 0 or cosine of 0 that's equal to 1 so when x equals pi over 4 yung u mo is equal to cosine of 2 pi over 4 so that's equal to cosine of pi over 2 Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So, ang mangyayari, your new interval is from 1 to 0. Okay. So, this becomes negative 1 half the integral of of um, ano yun? Sine. Sine of u du from 1 to 0. So, what is the integral of sine of u? So, this is cosine. Tama? Cosine of u. So, negative 1 half cosine of u evaluated from 1 to 0. So, this is equal to... Oh, let me correct this. Integral of sine u is negative. So, magiging positive 2. Ayan. Okay. So, we will evaluate now. So, 1 half times... Start with one. Uh, with one. I'm sorry. It's with zero. So cosine of zero minus cosine of one. Tamak ba? And then cosine of zero. That's equal to one. So our new answer will be one half minus cosine of one over two. So this will be the answer. So if you have any question or clarification, please let me know. And so that we can discuss on that. Okay, that's all for now, guys. So thank you so much for watching. So if you have any questions or clarifications, you can comment down there so that I would know and we can discuss on that. And um, that's all for now. Have a great day. Bye.